Good morning and welcome to Easter Lutheran Church. Will you please stand as you are able and join us in some songs? tries to roll over my bones when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own when brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I Stand. 
all have doubts. We all have things we're shameful of. We all have questions. And we fear. But just as we sang in that song, we just need to stand in the love of Jesus because he's got us. Please pray with me. God of grace and mercy, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to praise you. Fill us with your spirit that we would join with your whole church to worship you in spirit and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. morning church how are you today welcome to worship here at easter lutheran i'm pastor kevin preaching for us today is lead pastor megan we're so glad that you're here just take a moment to share a sign of god's peace with one another the peace of the lord be with you or you look great today both work At this time, we want to invite all the children forward as well. We have a special guest leading good news time for you today. So come on up here and join our summer intern staff, Julia and Alex, and invite all the children forward at this time to come forward. I did for a brief moment. Invite all the young people forward, those that still act like children, you're welcome to come forward too. They're wearing the giant Start the Party t-shirts. Okay, guys, we're going to make our way like right up here. 
Okay, so we can all we can all hang out together. All right. Who is now who is at VBS this last week? Okay. Do you guys remember what we talked about at all? Starting starting the party? Yeah? Okay, so what we kind of learned was that whenever Jesus or God is around, we can always have a party. So kind of like today, even on a Sunday morning, we're going to have we're going to start the party and have a party. So, we thought we would sing. Do you guys remember the song that we sang? Do you guys remember the dance moves? Okay. People who don't haven't heard this song, just follow along and just have a party. Doesn't doesn't matter if you if you don't know the moves, just dance. Okay, sound good? Sound like a plan? Okay. That was some good dancing, but I think we need a little more energy. Can you give me more energy? Can we try it one more time? Yes? Okay. One, two, three, four. Because Jesus, you love is for everyone. We're going to shine your light, shine your light today. So come on, clap your hands, and everybody dance. The party is popping. Nobody's stopping. We're going the energy there good job everyone now does anyone remember the memory verse that we did this week i think first i'm gonna say it and you'll repeat it back and then we can all do it together with the actions okay repeat after me you after me. always show me the path always show me the path that leads to life that leads to life you you fill me with joy Fill me with joy when I am with you. When I am with you. Now let's all try that together. Ready? You always show me the path that leads to life. You fill me with joy when I am with you. Awesome job, everybody. Um, now let's say a prayer. Repeat after me. After me. Hey, God. Hey, God. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this beautiful day. And for an awesome week at VBS. And for an awesome week at VBS. Thank you for starting the party. Thank you for starting the party. In our hearts. In our hearts. We love you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Awesome job, awesome. everybody. <laughs> nice job. And as they return to their seats, Alex and Julia, we want to thank you on behalf of our congregation for your amazing <laughs> service this entire summer. You've done an amazing job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So very grateful. <laughs> as we prepare to hear God's word, I invite you to join me with a few honest words of confession and forgiveness. Each petition, please respond, forgive us in your mercy, Lord. Throughout the history of God's people, we have depended on God's mercy and grace when we have not lived as God calls us. So today, as we come together to be renewed and born again in confession and forgiveness. O oh God, you search us out and you know us, and all that we are is open to you. We confess that we have sinned. Forgive us in your mercy, Lord. When we make no room for Christ and fail to welcome him into our lives, 
forgive us in your mercy, Lord. When we judge each other so that we might feel more worthy, forgive us in your mercy, Lord. When we forget to welcome everyone into your promise of life and hope, forgive us in your mercy, Lord. When we forget the Pentecost gift of speaking your good news to all, forgive us in your mercy, Lord. We turn to you, O Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, and declare that we are ready for your mercy. Forgive us in your mercy, Lord. Jesus has come into a world to forgive sins, to show God's love, and to bring new life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our lesson this morning comes from Acts chapter 2 through the rest of the summer. We are reading piece by three, piece through the entire chapter of Acts chapter 2. It is good stuff, friends. And so we are going to pick up where we left off last week. We are going to begin with Acts chapter 2 verse 12. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, look, uh, my household, we've been watching the Olympics a little bit lately. Maybe some of you have been too. It's kind of everywhere right now, right? You better believe that my family sat down and watched an entire women's water polo match from top to bottom, despite knowing nothing about the rules of water polo and never having watched a single match ever before in our lives, and it was awesome. <laughs> uh, and honestly, the athletes, of course, were the main event. They were incredible and strong. But I did save a little bit of my fascination uh, for Flava Flav. Uh, Flava Flav, if you do not know, it's okay. He's part of the groundbreaking 90s rap group Public Enemy. His group has been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, he is well known by some for having been on numerous reality shows. He's that guy who wears a clock necklace all the time. Um, it is now all over the media that Flava Flav is the patron saint of U.S. women's water polo because he learned that these incredible athletes work two and even three jobs just to be able to continue to play water polo. And so he is now financially backing the entire team and he is on the sidelines of every match cheering them on. Look, he is maybe not the kind of guy that you would typically expect to see in full fan mode at the sidelines of a water polo match in Paris. But that's something I've been thinking about a lot as I've been watching the Olympics and following the news around it. What kind of person do we think gets to be a certain kind of person? Maybe some of you have been as taken as the rest of our country with the American gymnast Steven Nedorazic. Um, he's the pommel horse specialist whose scores helped the U.S. men's gymnastic team win their first team medal in like 16 years. Uh, Steven wears thick glasses. He can finish a Rubik's Cube in under 10 seconds. He majored in electrical engineering, and he's a cat dad. 
And I swear that that is part of why he has just claimed everyone's hearts because he's got that geeky persona that no one seems to expect coming from a muscular men's gymnast. Or on the other side, there's Alana Marr, who's on the women's uh, rugby sevens team, the women's uh, US team. Uh, she and her team, they won the first rugby sevens medal the US has ever gotten, men's or women's. And she is all over social media as a champion for body positivity, because she's a nearly six foot tall woman with broad shoulders and a full build. And she earns comments online like, you look like a man, but she wears dresses and lipstick and is aggressive and she is girly and she will never ever apologize for being a whole, beautiful, talented, hilarious person. So whether it's Flava Flav or Steven Odorozic or Alana Mar, the point is the same. We as humans are really good at assuming that someone has to look or act or be just one way in order to be valid as a person. Where someone is from or the kind of work they do or how they look or what language they speak or any number of differences, it's constantly used against them. And that matters so much for our reading from Acts chapter two today. Last week in the first half of ch Acts chapter 2, we heard from Deacon Hunts. He told us about those first verses in Acts here. It's the familiar story of Pentecost. Jesus' uh, followers have gathered in Jerusalem for this uh, festival. It's a festival of gratitude at the harvest. They're joined together in one room, and a rush of wind and tongues of fire indicate that the Holy Spirit has joined them there, and they are filled with the Holy Spirit's power just as has been promised. And because of that power, all of these disciples are able to preach about God's work in the world in all of these different languages, languages that the pilgrims who had gathered in Jerusalem would have recognized as their own at that festival. And those who can hear this have been asking themselves, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And they're not amazed that someone from Galilee, from one region, can speak all of these languages. They're amazed because someone from a podunk backwater like Galilee can speak in almost any language at all. It's a statement of dismissal, of, of derision. It is a, a statement eager to discredit someone as not worthy of God's power just because of who they are and where they're from. It gets even better as we pick up in our reading this week as we start in, in verse 12 uh, because the crowds don't stop with just making fun of where they're from. The only reasonable explanation, they say, for this incredible, unbelievable scene is that these hick Galileans must be drunk. I mean, what else would you expect from a Galilean, right? I mean, of course they're drunk before nine o'clock in the morning. It's just another attempt by these crowds to, to deny and demonize someone who doesn't fit the bill for the kind of person who might receive God's power. And so who steps up to contradict this? It's the apostle Peter. He's the one who presents the counter argument. And honestly, he's probably the worst choice for the job because it was Peter who just a few weeks before at Jesus' trial denied he even knew Jesus. Not once, not twice, three times. Peter is among the disciples who fled and hid and maybe his opening denial doesn't really help. Oh, we can't be drunk. It's still morning, as if anyone from Galilee would care how early it was. But then Peter gets to his real argument, where he quotes from the prophet Joel. Joel is one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament, so-called a minor prophet, uh, not because it's less important, but because it's a shorter statement from a lesser-known 
prophet. Almost nothing is known about the prophet Joel aside from what is in the words that he has written. Peter doesn't go and pick one of the more uh, well-known prophets. Uh, he doesn't pick Isaiah. Even Jesus quoted from Isaiah, but, but Peter picks the prophet Joel. Why? Because, listen to those words again. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. Humans of all kinds. Maybe not even just humans. All flesh. All living things. All of life will know God's power. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So, sons and daughters. It explicitly lists them both. So gender does not matter in God's ability to speak through humanity. And then there's more. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. So age doesn't matter whether you are old or young or anything in between. It does not matter for who God chooses to share God's power. And then it keeps going. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy even upon slaves who in this time were worth less than nothing. Those whom society considered so worthless that they can be owned by other humans. There is no one too lowly or too unimportant or too forgotten to receive a full measure of the Spirit. This is what God does, Peter says. God always chooses everyone to receive God's outpouring of the Spirit. No one is the wrong age or the wrong gender or the wrong status or the wrong profession or the wrong body shape or the wrong ability or the wrong race or the wrong ethnicity or the wrong skill set or the wrong anything. There is no such thing as the wrong kind of person because God constantly demonstrates love and care to all people. No one is disqualified. No one is anything less than enough. God makes it true, so we're going to live it out. You're going to need to carry that with you, friends, that reminder. Because after the Olympics stop dominating the news cycle, we're going to go all the way back fully into an election season that is already as contentious and divisive as any we have ever seen. And you are going to need to remember that God works through all kinds of people. That God loves all kinds of people that we are Christ followers and that we are called to care for and work with and listen to and live with all kinds of people. No one can be dismissed. No one can be scapegoated. No one can be anything less than the full, beloved, valuable member of Christ's family that they truly are. And you're not just going to need to hold on to it through the news cycle. You're going to hold on to that truth as we as a congregation continue to work towards being one Easter at one site because for too long we have told ourselves stories about each other. Hill people are too this. Lake people aren't enough that. Older members do too much of this. Younger families don't do enough of that. I'm tired of it. <laughs> no more. There is not one kind of people. There is us as one community, one kind of people. We need to be under one roof so we can be face to face with each other and realize that we are indeed this big, weird, dynamic, 
wonderful community that doesn't look or think or act any one way except that we are all united under our mission to grow in faith and carry on the work of Jesus Christ as we are living in community, as we care with compassion, as we worship with joy, as we learn with devotion and love with generosity, you are going to be tempted to write someone off because you've never seen someone like that at Easter before. You are going to have to remember that each of us, no matter what site we've been worshiping at or what style of service we prefer or how long we've been members or even if we're members, this doesn't disqualify us from being recipients of God's grace in Jesus Christ through the power of the Spirit. So we're going to stop talking about each other. We are going to start talking with each other. We are going to stop making assumptions. We are going to start making connections. We're going to stop disqualifying each other from being part of the belovedness of God and of this community. We are going to start trusting that God's spirit will be poured out on all people exactly for who they are and that we are called to work together for the glory of God and for the good of all. This is our call, now more than ever. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we continue to celebrate God's good news in the community we know in Jesus Christ, we have this opportunity to share what God has given us the ushers will be coming around with baskets for your offering, or kiddos are welcome to come forward to the noisy offering box and share their offerings there. Thank you for the gifts that you share.
join me in thanking our faithful God for this offering? The prayer is printed right on the bulletin in front of you. Would you join me? Blessed are you, O God, our creator and sustainer, whose blessings are without number and whose love is without end. Through the power of your spirit, make us generous as you are generous. Through these gifts, may we all know your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join me now as we seek God in prayer, each petition, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, we marvel that you have chosen us. The power of your spirit fills each of us, giving us what we need and sending us out to serve you and our neighbors in this world you have created. Make us courageous and generous, trusting that you are at work in each of us and that our image can be found in all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, let your justice reign throughout the world to bring healing and peace throughout the Middle East as tensions increase, violence escalates. Send a spirit of reconciliation to places of conflict. Surround our conversations with compassion and civility. Work through our com companion congregations in Guatemala and Tanzania as they serve as agents of your mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we pray for all those in need of your comfort, peace, wholeness, care, especially Susan Udi, Bob Lawrence, for Lynette Lepresto, Harold Munshank, Bob Marr, Jody Taylor, and David Tripp. Let the truth of your victory over death be made known to all people, and may it bring hope to those who grieve their loved ones, including Jim Larson and John Schmidt. Lord, in your mercy. God of relationships, this love is a reminder of the love that you have for us. Bless the bonds that join us together as family, friends, community members, co-workers, classmates, fellow citizens, congregation members, and beloved in Christ. Be especially at work in the lives of the graduating Treehouse students, Ian, Jared, DJ, and Allie, for Corey, Bree, Mike and Irwin, Maria and Scott. Surround them with people who will remind them that they are lovable, capable, and worthwhile. Lord, in your mercy. God of all, you bring us together around your holy table that we might be filled with the true presence of your Son. Unite us through this meal that we share, that we would serve you as one people. And follow your Spirit's call with faithfulness. In your name, may all people know that they are welcome, celebrated, and worthy. And thank you, God, for all the seeds of faith that were planted this past week at Vacation Bible School. For every child, for every middle school and high school student helper, for every adult, Lord, may they be blessed and to know you. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and anything else that you see that we need, grant to us in your time and your mercy as we pray in the name of of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we gather around the table today, we remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for all people for the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. And so we make bold to pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here at Easter, if you're hungering for Christ's presence in your life, then please come to the table. The direction of the ushers, there's going to be four stations today. Two up front, one on the patio, especially if it's a little bit challenging to move. And then there'll be one station in the far back. Simply come to the station nearest to you, extend a hand, you'll receive a wafer, hold on to it and then you'll dip it in either the red wine or the white grape juice. If you're extra hungry right now, though, we'll give you another one. Just today only, though.
so don't worry. But hold on to a dipping in the red wine and white grape juice. Children are always welcome to get forward. The, the server will bless them if they're not receiving communion. Just help the server know what they're supposed to do at that moment. And again, the table is ready, and you are welcome to it. Ushers and servers, would you please come forward now?
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Can we just show some appreciation for the messengers leading us in worship again this morning? Thank you so much. We appreciate the song. Don't take you for granted. We appreciate you. Thank you. A few brief announcements before we head out today. If you'll notice, there's some things on the back cover of your bulletin. I invite you to take a peek at those, too. The first is, of course, a word of welcome. If this is your first time at Easter, this is a special place, and we're so glad that you're here. We just pray it's our hope and our prayer that you might find a spiritual home here at Easter where you could come to know Jesus Christ and carry on his work together with his incredible congregation. If you take a moment and fill out a, a uh, welcome card, you can also find it at easter.org. There's lots of opportunities to learn more about what God is doing in and through here. Any staff person, anybody wearing a lanyard, we'd love to chat with you and just encourage you and answer any questions you might have. You, let's continue to celebrate the summer. You'll notice a whole block on the back called Upcoming Events for Kids and Families. That's for kids of any age. Lots of things going on. We have Open Gym with an Olympic theme, August 12th through the 15th. Come during the day. Bring uh, a, an adult that you love, and it's a great way to burn off some energy together. It's going to be super fun. We also are doing Popsicles in the Park, which is Tuesday, August 13th. Notice that's at Pinewood Elementary School. We're going out in the neighborhoods together, friends, to meet our neighbors, and you can always bring friends. We'll bring the Popsicles. It's going to be a great time together there. We also wanted to let you know that on August 22nd, we're having an indoor and an outdoor movie night. Yes, it's a double feature. Let's go, right? That's going to be great. Just please come. There's lots to lots of things that you can invite friends to. We'd love for you to come be a part of that. So take that home, clip it out, and share it with a neighbor or somebody that needs a space like this and a place like this. This coming week, we are starting a Habitat for Humanity build in Farmington along our partners in Christ at Shepherd of the Valley. What a great way to team up together. Please be praying for the good work that's going to be happening down in Farmington this week. If you're at all interested, if you go to easter.org slash local partnerships, you can learn more about our build together down in Farmington. Uh, there's 15 spots each day. There's a few more spots towards the end of the week. So if you're like, I don't want to work. I want to go do something fun. Then let's go to get it done on Farmington. Let's be good. Easter at easter.org if you need more information. Baptism class coming up next Sunday, August 11th. And we'd love to chat with you about that. Just because you see children most of the time getting baptized here at Easter, baptism is for anyone at any age or stage of life. We'd love to celebrate that milestone with you. Please come and talk to us, Easter at Easter.org, to learn more about getting baptized here at Easter. And finally, if you are curious, One Easter, One Mission, the updates of our of our shared work here of building out this particular site. If you go to easter.org slash one site, you're going to find out more information. You can also watch the latest video that was uh, a, a meeting with the architects to look at the new uh, plans and things like that. It's exciting. So lots going on. And please keep November 3rd on your calendar. That's All Saints Sunday. I know you're thinking November. That's right. But we're also going to be celebrating 50 years of Easter ministry together. Woo! Wow! I was no twinkle in nobody's eye at that point. <laughs> I'm getting there, though, folks. We're getting there. Anywho's, we're so glad that you're here, so glad that you worshiped with us today. I invite you to stand as you're able to receive the blessing. As you head out into the rest of the week with whatever it may hold, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing our way out. Bless God in the sanctuary. Bless God in the fields of plenty. Bless God in the darkest valley. Every chance I get, I bless your name. Bless God in my hands. Are empty. Bless God with the praise that calls me. 